Hi everyone! For those of you who don't already know me, my name is Claudia Fulquignoni. I am an art teacher in the British School of Rio de Janeiro. And um, on behalf of UNINTER, the university that I'm doing visual art, I'd like to welcome you today to our first day of our course, extension course, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you about Keith Haring. Let's get started. So before we can begin, I wanted to go over a little bit of background history about him and his work. So to get started, Keith Haring was born on May 4, 1958 in Pennsylvania. As a child, Haring was fascinated by the cartoon art of Walt Disney. He spent many hours drawing with his father, an engineer whose hobby was cartooning. Not very interested in most of the art that he saw at typical galleries, he felt that they were too formal. He didn't want to create art either because he thought, uh, once again, that it was too formal, so he liked thinking outside of the box. He was more interested in the art of pop artists like Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein, who were considered unconventional artists in that art world. These artists, along with other pop artists' work, was shaped by what was considered to be pop culture, so things that were in television, commercials, cartoons, comic strips and advertisements during that period. These two pieces that we see here are examples of pop art. The one over here on the left is by pop artist Andy Warhol and the one over here on the right is by artist Roy Lichtenstein. Both very vibrant in color and both depicting a particular person that was popular during that specific time. So very similar styles. During the 1980s, Keith Haring began his career in New York City and he would find these black panels on which the city would place advertisements and he would enter with chalk and create these symbolic images. A couple more examples, so this is a final work that we see over here on the left. And here we can see Keith Haring actually drawing, so he would drop off of the subway and he would find, once again, these black, black panels before they would put the advertisements on and uh, he would go in with the chalk drawings and create his work of art. Not a lot of street art is considered to be called what is known as graffiti or graffiti art. And once again, this was not traditional art. It wasn't in the formal setting. So, of course, it inspired Keith Haring. He saw this graffiti art around him in New York City. And so he wanted to take advantage of it and it kind of gave rise to his inspiration. When some people see graffiti art, they think it's all about vandalism, but actually there are some positive aspects 
to graffiti or the art of graffiti is that the person who created it is spontaneous and is very good about spontaneity. They are very creative. It can be seen by all, so it's not something that you have to pay to see in a museum or an exhibition. But, of course, the main positive aspect of a graffiti art is that there is prior permission. It's not done illegally, without the city or the person knowing that the artwork is created. On the negative effects of graffiti art is that it is destructive, it's illegal, there was no prior consent, it's typically gang-related, so it has no artistic direction and no creative element whatsoever. Now, although Keith Haring didn't have prior permission, he was careful to draw on black panels, so there was no destruction of this private property. He got in trouble sometimes for drawing on the subway, but he wasn't destroying the subway tiles as we see here. He was using chalk, which was easily removable. He wasn't using spray paint or permanent paint, so all of his pieces in reality could have been washed away, could have been wiped away, could have been painted over and so forth. Many people loved his art. He carried on drawing because he wanted everyone to experience art. Some of the characteristics that we see in most of Keith's works are that he incorporates all these bold and black outlines around his symbols, using simplified and stylized figures. Figures are also surrounded by rhythmic lines to represent vibration and movement. Usually, students ask me why they don't have faces or more details. If you think about if you are a street artist and you are working fast to complete your drawings on walls and so forth, you are going to work very quickly because of that you are not going to use a lot of detail. Other features of his drawings that we often see inside his paintings, we see this radiating baby, we see dogs, we see many people dancing, and sometimes space ship. And these are just some of his symbolic images that he uses. Keith Haring created his own visual language. His symbols appear repeatedly in different artworks. This type of pictorial writing system is known as pictographs and so, as we see here, circled in blue, green, red, orange and purple. He brought a human touch to the subway stations, making it a little bit funnier. So his work started with these simple figures in white on black, but soon he developed some more complex compositions with uh, many pulsating figures dancing. He started to create in other places besides the subway, and then he started using colors in his work and also to paint them on canvas. The image that we see here, he uses dolphins to symbolize peace and love. He often see humans holding a heart, which means romantic love. 
his three-eyed smiley face means greed or joy and so his work incorporates a lot of meaning and symbolism. In this image you can see a mural called Crack is Wack created in 1986 as a symbol of anti-drug activism. He created this kind of awareness of freedom from drug addiction. He worked a lot with kids and kind of encrypting their voice within the city. An example of this, he became an AIDS voice during the 1980s. So we see two of his works here. As Keith Haring became famous, his artworks also became increasingly more and more expensive and so to ensure that his art continued to be available at affordable prices, which was key to the general public, he created what was known as the Pop Shop, which was located in New York City. And here he sold prints, stickers, buttons and other products that incorporated his artwork on it and also and again at an affordable price. So this is just a close-up view of his pop shop. So it's almost an artwork itself. But in September 2005, the pop shop finally closed its doors to the public. Keith Haring's work continues to be displayed around the world at galleries and museums and in public spaces. In addition to his subway art and his paintings, he also created three-dimensional sculptures. This one we can see here being a little bit more interactive and so in 1988 Keith Haring was di diagnosed with AIDS virus that he was raising awareness for and his artwork and at that time there was a little known about the disease and very few survived during this time. So in 1989, he started the Keith Haring Foundation to provide funding for AIDS organizations and children's programs. Keith Haring died in New York on February 16th. 1990 of AIDS related complications. He was 31 years old. So, for our project, what we are going to be doing is Create a Keith Haring inspired poster that focuses on this particular time of COVID-19 or any other social issue you find relevant. You are going to use Keith Haring figures and symbols. This uh, way you should have a clear message pertaining to your particular issue. You need to include thick, bold outlines as well as bold colors in the foreground. And for the background, you should also mimic the pattern designs used within his work as well. So I want to show you some past examples in different social issues and how students have incorporated not only similar symbols that Keith Haring used, but also their own symbols. So, 
This one here we see symbols representing women equality and rights. This next one pertaining to drug addiction and raising awareness for drug addiction. This one incorporates pollution, so awareness for what we are kind of doing to the environment and so forth. And for all this one pertains to childhood obesity. So those are just a couple of ideas that kind of give you inspiration and get you started. Okay, as you know, Keith Haring was an activist artist. Okay, now it's your turn to think about which issue you are going to communicate in your poster. So, to get started, we are going to use an A5 paper. A5 paper is exactly half of A4 paper. You just divide in the middle an A4 paper and you can have an A5 paper. Why we are going to work on A5 paper? Because you're going to put your ideas first. Probably you don't know how to draw these figures, so let me show you how to draw this. It's very easy and you just can follow the steps. So now we are going to be practicing the, the figures, how to draw the figures. So follow the steps to create some action figures. You first draw a stick man, then you bold the stick man, then you trace with black pen and color it, okay? Create rhythmic lines, movement lines. Okay, you can use active lines to show movement, okay?
now I'm going to show you four techniques of coloring using coloring pencils. The first one is called cross hatching. The second one is called shading. Then the third one, outlining. And the last one, single strokes. You are going to color here one way and then just color the opposite way to get a cross hatching and mix for a really clean looking color. But you can use only hatching. You don't need to use cross hatching. I forgot to put under the paper um, a rubber carpet to help me so we can color better.
This is my favorite one. This is awesome because it creates a 3D illusion. And uh, when I teach my students to think about the, the light of the sun when hit an object, uh, it creates some areas with shadow. So shading is good to show some areas that the, the sun is not hitting. So you push the pencil much harder in these areas. This one is so cool! You are going to outline the picture and you push harder and uh, everything inside you are going to do much, much lighter and fill the rest in.
you can create single lines and avoiding the, the blank space. It takes a while and takes a lot of concentration effort, but creates a real cool, amazing color design.
Now you can see an example of an amazing artwork done. Um, a student uh, did this, created this poster exactly the way I asked it to create using the issue COVID-19. And um, he uh, was inspired by the Keith Haring, of course, and he did exactly the characteristics of the uh, Keith Haring, the active lines here, and uh, these uh, figures, even hands like this, and look, they are uh, wearing masks. <laughs> very nice so the symbols used uh, mimic exactly the Keith Haring's work and have a clear message uh, pertaining uh, to, to this particular issue okay so he includes the, the bold outlines you can see here the colors vivid colors and the patterns as well. Okay, so in, in with this artwork, the students uh, were asked to, to do another activity that I'm going to show you next. <laughs> and so you are going to understand what we are going to do with this uh, artworks okay and this is a very special moment because um it's the moment that you are going to evaluate uh, um, classmates artwork so i have created this google slide presentation and uh, it's totally editable so here let me read you're going to choose a slide and insert the image of your final design this google slide is a shared presentation then write your name and a short sentence explaining your experience creating it so if you go here in my template you can see on the left side the the space the box to insert your the image of your final design and below you can write a paragraph explaining your experience okay and how was it what do you think you could improve what do you think it went well okay and here you are going to leave the space for the classmates comments okay of course, when you are going to create your slide, you are going to duplicate the slide using this template. And then you can uh, delete, of course, this box in red, in pink and uh, green, and use this template to, you, to, to prepare your presentation. Okay, so have fun and enjoy. Hi, I always like to leave a message for you. It's a food for thought moment. Okay, so I, I'm going to share the screen and so I can show you a quote from Keith Haring. He said, whatever you do, the only secret is to believe in it and satisfy yourself, okay? So don't do it for anyone else. So I totally agree with Keith Harry because believing yourself is one thing that is very important. 
and um, when you believe in yourself you have to trust in yourself but what does it mean it's, it's easy to say but what is the the real thing that we need to think today to believe in ourselves so trusting yourself means being able to attempt to do all kinds of things without judging yourself too rushly okay however if you are looking to build trust in yourself there is a tip for that okay it can be helpful for you to do more of the things that you are good at and less of the things that you aren't great at okay so i hope this food for thought is helpful for you and uh, enjoy your life be happy okay bye bye see you Have you ever seen this graffiti and this? And what about this one? So next week we have a special guest. He is Daniel Nadi. He is a graffiti artist and creator of the Little Blue King that you can see around the city of Rio de Janeiro. He says that the street is the food for his inspiration. And during this pandemic moment, it's very difficult for the graffiti artists because they lose the inspiration, the, they lose the hug from the people that are happy and very grateful for the art that they can see everyday life. So next Friday, Daniel Nadi is going to talk about some specific topics such as the origin of the graffiti in the world, in the Brazil, and also uh, he is going to tell us the difference between graffiti and vandalism and much much more so don't forget our meeting next friday 18th december at 7 30 in the youtube see you have a nice week bye bye